pipes, you have to press these bushings are there. You have to press these bushings down and pull the wire out or pipe out. Yeah. So this is the output of compressor. We are connecting into the input of 3 by 2 wire. You have to ensure that it is completely touching to the internal part of the valve so that it will not come out easily. Then, output of the valve. This is single acting cylinder. We are connecting it to the input of the single acting cylinder. Okay. So these are only two connections required to be done. Apply the compressed air to the input of the valve and connect the output of the valve to the input of single acting cylinder. Now I need to operate this lever and listen until I operate this, the valve is not changing its position and the cylinder will not extend out. So turn on the compressor. Look here. Okay. When I operate this valve, the input port gets connected to the output port and then pressure gets applied to the input of the single acting cylinder and then the piston comes out of the cylinder, that is extended out of the cylinder. When I release the pressure on the lever, it comes back to the original position due to internal spring action. Right? Now you can observe that the speed of piston is fixed. Right? But if I want to control that speed of piston, I have to use this pressure regulator valve. Now instead of connecting this output of valve directly to the cylinder input, I will connect it through this pressure control or pressure regulator valve. For that, first turn of the compressor. Right? Now what we will do is, this output of valve will connect to the pressure regulator. Right, so this is the input from compressor. Output of valve goes to the pressure regulator valve, and output of pressure regulator goes to the cylinder. It's not operating because this control valve is closed. So if I open this valve, piston operates and observe the speed of movement of the piston. We can control the speed. Now it has become slow. Right? So you can control the speed of motion of piston using this pressure regulator valve. Now we will see the operation of double acting cylinder. For that, the input is to be applied here. The input of 5 by 2 valve. Then, one output of the valve to the one input one of the cylinder. Another output of the valve to input 2 of the cylinder. It can come out and go back. Right? Now this is lever operated on off position switch. Turn on. I have to make it off. Valve has to be turned off. It is not spring written. So this is on. So when we operate the valve on and off, the cylinder will extend and retract in one of the positions. Again we can control the speed of motion of this through this pressure regulator. But we have to connect it on both the sides or connect it here on the input side itself. So when pressure is coming out of the valve, it will be connected. Or on the output side if you are connecting, you have to connect two pressure regulator valves. This is understood, right? Now, we'll see the operation of solenoid operated valve. So we'll see this three by two solenoid operated valve. You can see here uh, electrical input is required to be given. This switch, electrical switch is there through which the voltage is applied. So current will flow through this coil when the switch is turned on. And we will now apply 
the compressor input to the input of the valve the input of single acting cylinder is connected to the output of the solenoid valve only these two connections are required to be done and then this has to be turned on power supply has to be turned on means turned on and then when you press the switch the piston extracts out of the cylinder this is again push to on switch till i press it the cylinder remains out of uh, the piston remains out of cylinder when i release it no current flows through the coil and due to spring action it goes back in the cylinder again you can connect this input through regulator and speed of the piston motion can be controlled similarly you can operate this 5 by 2 solenoid operated valve for controlling the double acting cylinder right now the last one remained is this pneumatic motor right we will now connect instead of connecting this input to the single acting cylinder we will connect it to the motor when we turn on this valve current flows valve operates and pressure is applied to the input of pneumatic motor and the motor rotates. again if we connect this uh, input to the pneumatic motor through regulator and controlling this knob rotating this knob of the regulator we can control the speed of the motor right so all these systems are used in industrial applications now for training purpose these are of smaller size but in industrial applications depending upon the load capacity load lifting capacity or movement capacity or payload requirement the specifications of cylinders are selected and you are aware that the pneumatic systems are being used in the applications where larger loads are required to be lifted but if still more weights are to be lifted then you should go for hydraulic systems like the examples of the elevators in the uh, construction sites or on the uh, dockyards where big containers are loaded and unloaded from big ships so there the lifts are being used or cranes are being used where in the hydraulic cylinders are being so this is just the observation of how these pneumatic components are working how exactly they work what is the difference between 3 by 2 valve 5 by 2 valve lever operated or solenoid valve and what is the difference between single acting cylinder double acting cylinder and how exactly they work understood